where I got the idea for Sid Charisse's voice is really I had nothing to do with it at all. She really just speaks to me and I just type. I get asked that all the time. The truth is, is that it's just a voice that's in my head, and I often say that I became a writer because I had to do something with all the voices in my head. Otherwise, I'd have a nervous breakdown. So Sid is one way in which I channel all of that. I always wrote from the time that I was a child. It was never not something I did do, if that makes sense. Also, it's important to note that my mother was an English professor and also a writer herself, so I was very much encouraged as a child to write. And also, I was raised as an only child. I have two half-sisters, but they're much younger than me, so I wasn't raised with them. So writing was so much of a retreat to build a world and build a family when often I was alone. See, I wrote a lot, especially when I was in high school. That was one of the ways I passed away time was I would make up stories and pass them off to friends or leave them in their lockers, and they were ongoing soap operatic things. And then when I got out of college, I didn't actually study writing when I was in college, but once I got out of college, it really just sort of rose up and it would not be contained. I had to just pursue it, and I did. It involved a lot of coffee drinking and cupcake eating to write the book Cupcake. Uh, in the morning, I go to a place called the Writer's Room in New York City. It's a sort of a loft-like writing space. It looks sort of like a public library with a lot of carousels set up. I keep a laptop in a locker there, and I get there very early in the morning and with a very tall cappuccino and an iPod on my ears, and I get cracking. And sometimes I'll jump right in. It depends on how quickly the caffeination goes in. And sometimes I will just sit there and just dawdle for hours. But usually, especially with the Sid Charisse character, the more I get into writing it, the deeper I get into the book, the faster it goes. The initial stages are a little kind of slow as I kind of work my way back in and rediscover all the characters. But then once I'm in, it tends to fly. And that was definitely the case here. I made it my mission to do as much market research as I could in terms of actual cupcake eating. That's what I told myself, at least. And so my joke about it is, is that by the time I was finished writing the book, I, my fat pants no longer fit. So I had to jump back on the treadmill. But it was worth it in the interest of writing a book called Cupcake to sample as many as I did. I really could talk anybody's ear off on the subject of where the best cupcakes to get in New York City are. I try not to plan anything out. So... I like to let the books happen the way they want to happen. There were not very many surprises to me when writing Cupcake. I think that the biggest surprise to me happened in terms of the relationship between Danny, her half-brother, and his former partner, Aaron. I had really expected a new romance for Danny, and I was not planning to put them back together or even have that be part of the storyline. In fact, the whole book the way I had it in my mind initially was very much about him pursuing a very different course in life, a new course in life. And then I wrote a scene where both of them showed up at a Halloween party dressed like disco characters, and they were dressed very similarly. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, you were really going down the wrong path, Rachel. This is the path that you were supposed to be on. So that was probably the biggest surprise when I was writing it was how that story developed. The other big surprise for me is that it was the character of Shrimp. I often say that that character, I love him, but I sort of feel about him the way Teresa's mother does about him, which is like, you know, he's probably a good kid, but he's sort of lost and trying to find his way. And not the most stable person for a young girl to have a relationship with, even though I love him to death and I understand why teenage girls would be in love with him. So I've always had this sort of affection for his character, but also this wariness of him, sort of from a more of a maternal instinct. And this time around, I have to say, I completely fell in love with him as a character. All of that just got stripped away, and he really, in my mind, he came into his own so much more as a character for me than he had in previous books. He was less elusive, and I understood him better. I understood why he was doing what he was doing, and I was rooting for him more. So that was my other big surprise in writing it, was how much I personally fell in love with Shrimp. Mm -hmm.